Okay, in this video, we are going to have a look at the RP2350, which is on the Pico 2, and a latch up problem when using GPIO configured as inputs with pull downs. So, this is my little demo circuitry. I have a Pico 2 board, which has an RP2350 on board. I have a reset push button, so when I press that, it's going to reset the microcontroller, and all the GPIO pins will go into the default state, which is inputs with pull downs. Now this uh, push button is connected up to GPIO 16, so when I press it, it's going to apply 3.3 volts to GPIO pin 16. And I have a meter, you can see these two leads here, connected across uh, the GPIO uh, pin 16 so we can monitor the voltage. This is a schematic diagram of my test setup. So we have an RP2350. This is GPIO pin 16. It's configured as an input with a pull down. And we have a push button switch connected to 3.3 volts. Now when we're not pressing down on the push button switch, the pull down resistor will feed a logic zero into the microcontroller. When we press down on the switch, we're going to feed 3.3 volts to GPIO pin 16, and we'll get a logic one fit into the microcontroller. Okay, next, I'm going to demonstrate the latch up problem on the RP2350 when using GPIO as inputs with pull downs. So first of all, I'll press the reset button, so now all the GPIO pins are configured as inputs with pull downs. So now when I press the push button, it's going to feed 3.3 volts into pin 16. But right now the pull down resistor, the internal pull down resistor is feeding a zero into the microcontroller. So when I press the button, it's going to feed 3.3 volts into pin 16. So now if we read pin 16, it would show a logic high. Now when I release the button, you see it latches to 2.1 volts. Now if we read pin 16, it will show logic high, and that will cause your code to fail. Okay, so here is the simplest solution to this problem. I have added an 8.2k ohm resistor, which you can see here, externally from GPIO pin 16 to ground. So now, I'll do a reset, reset all the GPIO pins. Now when I press the push button, goes to 3.3 volts, I release, goes to zero. So that's the simplest fix. So you, if you have that problem, you could stop this video right now, apply 8.2k ohm resistor to the GPIO pin that you're using to solve your problem. Okay, I'm going to continue on in this video to see what is causing this latch up problem. So here's my test circuitry. So we have GP15 configured as an input with a pull down. Now this receive buffer here leaks. There's leakage current coming out of this buffer in this direction. It's sourcing current and when it hits this resistor we're going to get a voltage drop of 2.1 volts and that's what we saw on our voltmeter. Now to solve that problem we add an 8.2k ohm resistor externally from pin 16 to ground so now we have the external resistor and the internal resistor in parallel and that will lower the total resistance so we're going to shunt away more of the leakage current and that will cure the latch up problem. Okay in some cases we do not need the 8.2k ohm pull down resistor to solve the latch up problem as you can see here. We could use a single pull double throw push button switch. So in the up position it's feeding 3.3 volts into the GPIO and when it's down it's grounding the input to the GPIO which is taking away all the leakage current. Also you could drive the GPIO with digital logic like a CD4050 which has a totem pull output. So it's, it sinks and sources uh, current so when it's inputting a low, it's actually sinking uh, the current and taking away all the leakage current and you won't have a latch up problem. Okay, next, we are going to have a look at a software workaround for this latch up problem. Now if you look at the data sheet for the RP2350 and search for pads, you'll see a write up of how each GPIO pin works. You'll see an output buffer, an input buffer, you'll see the pull up and pull down resistors. And if you search for pads bank zero, GPIO 16 register. You can see we could program each one of the GPIO pins. If you look at bit 6, it's called the input enable. So we could disable or enable the input buffer. Now when we disable the input buffer, there'll be no leakage current. So the software workaround is we have the input buffer disabled until we want to read one of the pins, then we enable it read the pins and then disable it again and that will solve the latch up problem. Okay I have TerraTerm up and running on my computer and I'm running zep 2 on my Pico 2 so Travis has ported zep 2 to the RP2350 so I'll use that to demonstrate 
a software workaround for the latch up. So right now we just came out of a reset. So if we look at all the pins, all the GPIO pins, they're set up as inputs with pull downs except for pin 25. I made that an output because it's connected up to the onboard LED. So we'll clear the screen and we'll run a little script. So this is going to be the software workaround. So first of all, we're going to enable GPIO pin 16 receive buffer. You see 16 enable. Then we're going to read pin 16. So pin 16 high question mark. We'll read it. This will display it either 0 or 1. Then we disable the input buffer. So there's no more leakage current. And we're going to do that every 50 milliseconds many times. So I'll run that little script. So it's seeing zero because I'm not pressing the button and I don't have an 8.2 K ohm resistor uh, from my GPIO to ground. So I'm going to press the button. So I'm getting a one. Release, release the button, getting zero. Press the button, getting one. Release, getting zero. So that's the workaround. It's working okay without a pull down resistor. So I'm using a software workaround and it seems to work okay. Okay, so that was my little tutorial on the latch up problem on the RP2350 on the new Pico 2 board. Now is Raspberry Pi going to come up with a fix? Are they going to come up with a RP2351? Probably not. It's going to cost a lot of money and since they have a software workaround they probably won't. So time will tell. We'll just have to wait and see.